there's things that you can do and not do that either keep you in a lower frequency or a higher frequency. And this is something that is crucial to me and so important to me, especially because I know that so many things in my life, literally everything in my life, everything in your life stems from the energy at which we operate. Our energy guides the way that we act and how we show up in this world. Hello, my gorgeous souls, and welcome back to another episode of the Manifestation Bay podcast. I hope you are all having a lovely day today. It has cooled down in Scottsdale over the last two weeks, but unfortunately, the temperatures went right back to 107, 108, 109. This girl is just so ready for fall. That's why I'm wearing a long sleeve jumpsuit because I keep it real cold in my house. I'm trying to simulate a more winterish uh, temperature in my home so that I can feel like we're finally entering a reprieve from the super hot summer. There's my tangent on the weather here in Scottsdale. Let's get to the topic of today's episode. So I have seen that you guys absolutely love the podcast episodes where I'm sharing like five steps to accomplish something or a list of five things I would never do, five things I would never say, five things I would do, five things I would say, five tips, five tricks, five hacks, episodes like that you guys have been loving based on the data behind the scenes. So I decided to bring forward another one where we dive into five things I don't do to keep my frequency high, especially amongst chaos, especially amongst a chaotic year. Don't we all love election year where just it seems like the world is about to fall apart. We don't know when it's going to fall apart. It feels like any day something is going to go awry and then we get past election year and the next year is just a normal year. So at least that's our hope. Our hope is that every year gets better and better and better coming from a manifestation coach, because if that's what we intend on, that's what we get. Okay. So first and foremost, let's talk about frequency. What is frequency? Frequency is a measure of energy That is based on your emotions, your beliefs, your thoughts, your attitude, your identity. It is a measure of energy that can range from low to high. We always hear like, oh, that's low frequency. That's high frequency. That person is experiencing low frequency thoughts. That person is experiencing high frequency thoughts. And to me, it's just a measure of consciousness. And I believe that Frequency determines how you feel, how you show up in life, and also subsequently what happens to you in life. And I believe that low frequency can stem from, you know, being in fear. I think that when you are in fear, you are operating at the lowest frequency that you possibly can operate from. My shaman talks about this all the time. He says fear is the worst, 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 worst place that you can succumb yourself to. Because fear is something that keeps you trapped, something that keeps you stuck. It's not even real. It just keeps us self-perpetuating this limiting reality, worshiping the problems that we don't actually even want. Versus high frequency, when I think about when have I operated at my highest frequency or when I meet people who just their energy is glowing, it's radiant, they are operating at the highest frequency that they possibly can, like what makes me feel that way and what do I notice about those people? And what I notice about those people as well as myself is that when you are certain of being guided, of being loved, of being protected, when you are certain that there, you have this spiritual connection that that has got you no matter what, it's like chaos can ensue in your day-to-day life. You know, there's external forces that we feel like we can't control, we have no say in, we have no part of, and yet we seem to be okay inside. We seem to have a regulated nervous system. We seem to be adaptable to changes. We seem to find ourselves in a place of surrender. And I think it just comes from that knowing, not just belief, but knowing. Because when you've had a belief 
proven to you over and over and over and over again. It just becomes like this knowing, this knowing that you are always guided, you are always loved, you are always protected. I feel like when you are operating from that place, you are operating from the highest frequency. So there's things that you can do and not do that either keep you in a lower frequency or a higher frequency. And this is something that is crucial to me and so important to me, especially because I know that so many things in my life, literally everything in my life, everything in your life stems from the energy at which we operate. Our energy guides the way that we act and how we show up in this world. So if we're not taking care of our frequency, if we're not taking care of our energy, we are not going to show up as the best versions of ourselves. And if we don't show up as the ver- best versions of ourselves, then the whole world, because this compounds, you know, each person compounded these big groups, the big collective not operating at the highest frequency, not being the best version of yourself, that then creates this world of chaos. So I believe that if we have a regulated nervous system, which is cool, calm, collected, adaptable to changes and challenges, knowing that God has got us, source, universe, angels, whatever it is that you believe in, and then making healthy progress in life. A lot of people think that it is achievement that makes us happy. I actually think it's progress that makes us happy. If you are just, if you feel like you're progressing in life, you're just moving forward, you're taking little steps here and there to get you to your desired reality, to your dreams and goals, I think that that's what actually makes you happy because in the end, it's not about the destination. It's actually about the journey. And so many people, the most successful people in this world will say the exact same thing that I just said. So I think it's really about feeling like you're making progress in life. When you're operating from this consciousness, you are operating at a high frequency. And if we allow the outside world to dysregulate our nervous system, which is really easy to do, it is really easy to do. I still get into traps here and there. And I'll share how some of the things that I share that I say that I never do or don't do, like even I think two of them at least, I'm still working on. I'm not perfect. I'm not super strict in those areas. Sometimes it still affects me, but it's all about what? Progress. Exactly. So anyway, if we allow the outside world to dysregulate our nervous system, our frequency gets lowered and we start to attract low frequency experiences into our lives. The things that then further dysregulate our nervous system. And then we ask ourselves, you know, wow, why did I get fired from that job? Why am I losing income? Why am I losing clients? Uh, why am I getting sick? Why am I, why did I get in that car accident? Why do I seem to be picking the same fight over and over and over and over again with my partner, right? Because we're operating from a dysregulated nervous system and that's impacting our energy and that impacts our realities because that's what we're putting out into our reality. We are creating and cultivating internal chaos, which then is only reflected because the outside world only reflects the inside world. And so then, of course, we see chaos in our lives. So not doing these five things or at least considering to minimize, that's my goal here, even just considering to minimize or just thinking more critically and more consciously about these five things will massively raise your frequency without even getting into those typical manifestation practices. Guys, I'm not even talking about like vision boarding here or journaling or monitoring your thoughts or doing your limiting belief practices, um, like your rewiring practices or listening to hypnosis or a meditation. I'm not even mentioning meditating in here. Like these are not your typical manifestation practices, but these are things that absolutely affect your frequency. Now, before I go into those five things, super quick announcement. My All In On Your Dream Life workshop starts October 8th, which is literally next week. And if you are someone who feels like they're doing all the right things, like you've done all the research, you've read all the books, you've taken all the courses, you've done all these quote unquote right things when it comes to manifesting your dream life, whether it's manifesting your career, your dream career, manifesting your dream partner, your soulmate, manifesting your dream family, manifesting money and your dream income, your dream bank account, whatever that is for you. But nothing seems to be working no matter what you're doing. You just can't seem to crack the code on manifestation and you don't know why. 
I'm going to help you finally understand why that is, how to shift it, and how to finally go all in on your dream life. And it's all about, you know, the reason why I called it all in on your dream life is because I want to get you off of sitting on the fence. I don't want you sitting on the fence anymore and just watching what could be and watching your potential and maybe one day this thing will happen to me and just watching everyone around you going after their dreams and goals while you're wondering like what the fuck is wrong with you, (laughs) right? So if you've ever felt that way, this workshop is for you. Take it from someone who's been teaching this for almost two decades, like unofficially two decades, very officially about a decade. Um, I've helped thousands of people, thousands and thousands and thousands go from being broke, go, go from being depressed, go from being confused in life, feeling purposeless, feeling worthless in life to making more money than they've ever had before in their lives, literally surpassing what they even thought was possible for them, Um, being happy for the first time in their lives, like genuinely happy because that's what I like to teach inside of my programs. It's not about the stuff. I get you in through the stuff. I get you in to my world through oh, look, you can have more money, you can have cars, you can have houses, you can have all these beautiful, nice things, can live a life of luxury. But when you get inside my world, it is so much deeper than that. It is so much deeper than that. We go deep into releasing old pains, dramas, traumas, rewiring your brain. We go into learning how to cope with hard emotions and how to process hard emotions, how to actually get to the root cause of what's keeping your frequency low. It's not just about having a negative thought, right? It's not just about, oh, you built the wrong vision board or you said the wrong affirmation or you're not saying your affirmations often enough or anything like that. I take you to the root cause. I've always been a root cause kind of person. I approach root causes in my life. That's how I approach my health. That's how I approach my fitness journey my detox journey, my personal development journey, just everything, my relationship comes down to root causes. So anyway, and then helping people know exactly what their purpose is, exactly who they are. The deep spiritual shamanic work that I've done over the last few years has really helped me understand like, why the fuck are we here in the first place? What is the point of life in the first place? And it's it's really fun to understand that it really is not that serious. And you genuinely came here to just create and just to be and learn lessons and learn things and evolve and grow as a soul, as a spirit, so that you can continue to evolve in the deeper spiritual planes, so much more than the material world. But anyway, I digress. If you're someone who wants to transform their life, you are next. And you can do so inside of my All In On Your Dream Life workshop, Um, Again, we start October 8th, and the link for that is manifestationbabe.com slash go all in. Again, that's manifestationbabe.com slash, people say backslash, forward slash. For me, I know how to type in a website at this point. I feel like I've done it at least 17 trillion times in my lifetime. It's, you guys know the slash, okay? It's the slash, (laughs) slash go all in. And if you haven't yet followed me on YouTube, you can actually watch this podcast uh, episode on video if you're someone who likes to watch video episodes. I am constantly getting outside of my comfort zone with this fucking camera. You guys have no idea how much looking into a lens of a camera throws off my thought process. It's almost like I have to think three times harder on what I'm saying because I'm so used to for the last six years or however many years I've had my podcast to just have my microphone on and I'm like looking at the floor. And, you know, of course I have notes. You guys Now know that it's part of the ADHD tendency to go off the script, off topic, who knows what I'll end up talking about. And I just want to, you know, make sure I'm giving you guys the best value and staying on topic. So that's why, you know, I'll look at my notes every now and then. But anyway, looking at the camera is like, what the fuck to me? So I'm forever getting outside of my comfort zone. I know one day I'll be used to talking to this camera and not overthinking things. So in the meantime, come watch me figure that, figure out this process <laughs> alongside with me. And if you like to see facial expressions, motions, movements, eye movements, thought processes happen in front on camera, then, you know, come watch me. Anyway, let's go into these five things that I don't do to keep my frequency high. Number one, 
Anyway, let's go into these five things that I don't do to keep my frequency high. Number one, for whatever reason, has become controversial, but this is something that I have been avoiding like the plague for as long as I can remember because I grew up, I grew up with parents who were glued to the TV, watching the news 24 seven, and I never saw the, the news making them happy. So at a very young age, I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder what the impact is of constantly being fed information about everything that you can't do anything about, you cannot control, you cannot change. It's not like you're going to go find out about something that happened 12 states away from you, especially if you're in the United States, right? Like something's going on 12 states away from you. It's not like you're going to be able to walk over to that state right now to that person and help them as the newscaster is reporting, right? You're just like learning about all of the negative shit that's happening for the, you know, the argument of it's important to stay informed. But I call bullshit on that. So the number one thing that I want to share with you is I don't watch the news. I don't believe on being informed for the sake of being informed. I believe on being informed about something only when I can actually do something about it. If it's a cause that I can actually donate to, if it's something where I can go and like petition for something, or I can go and actually go outside and help this person, right, and make some sort of change or transformation in this person's life, then sitting and watching all of these horrible, horrible, horrible things that happen in the world and just causing my own nervous system to completely dysregulate to the point where I'm now frozen in fear. I don't want to leave my house. I feel like there's no point to life. There's no point to going on. Only horrible things happen in the world. What is the point? I'm just going to turn everything off. I'm just going to give everything up. I'm just going to take the covers on my bed and just lift them over my head and just sit and not want to do anything because I feel like that's what the news does to us. And granted, the news capitalizes on our fears. The only way that the news can make money is if they scare the living crap out of us to such a degree that now our stress hormones are pumping through our bodies. We then become addicted to that feeling, even though it's a very negative feeling. We develop this need, this addiction, this familiarity to cortisol and adrenaline running through our veins. And then we glue ourselves to the news and we can't move from the news. We can't stop watching it. Next thing you know, we're scared out of our minds. We feel low. We feel low frequency. We feel stressed. We feel terrified. We feel frozen in fear. And then what? Then what productive shit is going to come out of that, right? If I feel like I need to be informed about something, I just ask my friends. That's my hack. I'm like, hey, what's going on with this, right? My husband, he has the ability to watch the news and not be affected by it. And God bless you people out there. I'm sure there's people out there who are like that. As a sensitive soul and as, as a sensitive being, like I know so many of you are, just ask your friends what's happening because sometimes them summarizing something that's happening in the world is not going to be the same as watching a newscaster or an anchor, like using this particular language that is designed to dysregulate our nervous systems. And also I heard that the amount of negative news that we hear in just one day in the modern day and age is like something that a person wouldn't even hear about in their entire lifetime, even just 100 or 200 years ago or whatever. I'm not like a history professional here. Sometimes I mix up dates and I'm not good on dates and how many hundreds of years ago that something happened. But you guys can imagine the amount of negative news that we receive on social media, on the news nowadays, is so much more than a person was receiving in a whole lifetime at some point, right? And it's, oh, wow, what a mystery. I wonder why we're so anxiety ridden nowadays. I wonder why so many people need antidepressants. Hmm. I wonder why. It's a mystery. No, it's not. It is not a mystery at all. So anyway, I would rather stay empowered in my life and I would rather get involved in causes that I actually can do something about and stay in a high frequency for the work that I have to do in my life. I have to maintain my frequency for my 
uh, for my child. I almost said children. Don't yet have children. I have one child and no, I'm not pregnant yet. For anyone who thinks that that's a slip, (laughs) it is not. So anyway, I ask God, you know, to lead me to causes that I can actually do something about. And I will be informed about the perfect thing when it's time for me to be informed about something. But just scrolling and doom scrolling through all this negative stuff that's happening in the world, it's causing all of us to be paralyzed in fear. It is lowering our frequency. And then we wonder why we act out, why we have so much judgment and hatred towards each other. It's because we're all operating with completely dysfunctional, dysregulated nervous systems in the world. Okay, that's my spiel on that. I'm not going to go further on that because I do want to keep this episode, uh, you know, at least under an hour. So number two is I do not listen to mainstream music. Oh, I cannot stand mainstream music. First of all, I strongly believe that mainstream music is something's being done to it. Um, I believe that it is being tuned to lower frequencies. And I strongly believe that it contains subliminal messaging that keeps us stuck in fear and anxiety and worry and distress and drama and, uh, you know, shitty relationships. Think about how many mainstream songs there are out there on like going through relationship drama and being cheated on and like, you know, fuck men, fuck women, fuck this, fuck that. And it's like hardly ever music. And I'm not saying there aren't at all, but there's very few songs from a person living a very peaceful life that all of us can, you know, kind of look at and be like, ooh, I want that too. Um, Very few songs are being written about love stories. Um, Very few songs are being written about, you know, beautiful things happening in the world. It's very much you know, all about drugs and partying and horrible things happening in the world and violence and, you know, baby mama drama, right? So I just don't feel really good when I listen to like rap and hip hop and even most pop songs nowadays. And I used to be a huge pop lover, um, which is unfortunate. What I do instead now, and it's going to be the most boring kind of music you've ever listened to in the world, but I promise you, Give me one week of listening to solfeggio or solfeggio. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's spelled S-O-L-F-E-G-G-I-O frequencies. Listen to frequency music for just a week of your life. Allow yourself to get bored in the car. I know it's not the most uh, exciting music. It's not the most vibey music. And that's not to say I don't listen to music at all. I listen to so many, so much music, but it's not really mainstream music. It's like DJs you probably haven't even heard of. I don't know, music that just it's not playing on the radio constantly. Let's just put it that way. It's not something that for whatever reason makes its way to the mainstream and is playing constantly over and over and over again. And sometimes you have to ask yourself, why is it being played so much? Why is this song so popular when it's literally a bunch of crap being put into the lyrics? Hmm. Right. So solfeggio frequencies or 528 hertz is my personal favorite. It's actually um, been scientifically proven to literally repair your DNA, to regenerate cells, to reduce anxiety and clears out the frequency of fear. I will listen to 528 hertz while I'm working, while I'm getting my nails done, while I'm reading a book, while I'm driving in the car. The only thing I won't do is I will listen to, like I won't do it while I'm working out. I don't know. I need some bumps when I work out. I don't know about you. I can't listen to like classical music. But any other time when I'm just doing mindless activities, bonus points if you connect a subliminal audio, which I do for my students, to frequency music because then you're also programming your subconscious mind with actual affirmations that you want it to listen to and you want it to get impressed with and, you know, actually believe. That's another power move that you can do, just like combining the power of frequency music and subliminals. That's another thing you can do. But I am just nonstop listening to 528 hertz. Give it one week and just notice the difference. I play it throughout all the speakers in my house I play it while meditating. I play it, again, every move I make, I'm listening to frequency music. And I just feel so much more at peace in my life. I feel like everything is going great. I just feel like high frequency. I feel 
like I have confidence, like I can think clearly, like I'm healthier. I literally feel like I'm getting healthier as I listen to this music. Um, there's also a device that my shaman recommends called the Love Tuner. Um, I'll post the link in the show notes. It is this whistle that you can blow into and it kind of functions like a what's the word that I'm looking for? You know, the thing that you like, oh my God, this is going to be the worst description ever, but it's like this thing that looks like a U shape and you hit it with the stick and it just makes a, a tone, right? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? So the whistle basically sounds like the same thing. And I literally feel like as I'm blowing into it, it's vibrating my lips and my mouth and my whole head and my body to the frequency of 528 hertz. And then, of course, you're just listening to it and that frequency is then impacting your whole body through the power of sound. My shaman talks a lot about the power of sound. I am nowhere near sophisticated enough to um, describe it to you in, in all the different ways that it's beneficial to your mind, your body, your soul. But I will just say, like, try it for a week and just tell me what a difference it makes. Um, I also love going to sound baths. Sound baths are great. I used to be like, I don't get it. What is listening to these bowls going to do for me in my life? How is this going to help me manifest? <laughs> that was always my thing. Like, how is this going to help me rewire my limiting beliefs? Um, and the thing is, is that sound baths obviously work through sound frequency and they just allow your entire body to harmonize with these frequencies that are literally aligned with the frequency of love, which 528 is known as the love frequency. It's known as the miracle frequency. So it just... It just aligns your whole body, which is made up of 70% water, to the frequency of that sound. Really powerful stuff. Just imagine for a second waking up every single morning to your literal dream life. You have the career of your dreams. You wake up next to the partner of your dreams. You drive to breakfast in the car of your dreams. You pay for your morning coffee from the bank account of your dreams, and you and your family vacation in the dreamiest spots on earth. You are living a total vision board life. Well, you don't have to imagine anymore because my free three-day live experience is guaranteed to teach you how to make this your reality. And it's officially open for registration and we start really soon. If you're tired of getting wishy-washy results from wishy-washy manifestation content, now is your chance to learn from an actual expert who's been doing this for almost two decades now with tens of thousands of students and tens of thousands of testimonials and success stories. It's time to go all in on your dream life and manifest everything you've ever wanted. Head over to manifestationbabe.com slash go all in to sign up right now. Again, that's manifestationbabe.com slash go all in. And as an added bonus, I'm also offering some pretty epic prizes just for participating in the live event. Your dream life is waiting for you and it's time to make it your reality. Manifestationbabe.com slash go all in. Number three is I don't disrespect my vessel, my vessel being my body. Your body is the container for your frequency. And I can't tell you how many people get so stuck in the mindset work and completely forget about their bodies. The thing is, is that your body is the vessel to your soul, to your consciousness. Your body is the vessel to your spirit. Your body is so important to be taken care of. And I used to loathe my body. I used to abuse my body. I used to just see it as a mechanism of just looking good in life, right? Um, a mechanism that um, as long as it looks good, it doesn't matter what my state of health is because that's just what the physical body is. It's for the way that you look. And I, ever since I lost my health, thankfully, temporarily, when I had BII, which is the reason why I took out my breast implants, breast implant illness, when I went through that journey, I was like, oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Your body is all about how you feel. Oh, my God. It's so much more important than how you look. It is how you feel feel. Guys, when I was laying in bed, having zero energy, nothing in me to get out of bed, 
having vertigo, suicidal thoughts, crazy limiting beliefs, just no desire to live, no energy, getting out of breath, just going to the bathroom, having to cancel every single work-related appointment that I had because I literally had nothing to give to the world. I had nothing in me. I had no energy. I was losing just words, basic words in the human vocabulary, the English vocabulary just weren't coming to me. Um, Forgetting what I was talking about completely, just my health completely deteriorated for about a year and a half of my life, like got really, really, really bad for about a year and a half. And I would say slowly deteriorated over four years. Never again, never, ever again. Ever since I got my breast implants out, you guys know it's been five years now. I've been in the wellness world religiously trying everything, (laughs) testing everything, getting all my blood levels tested constantly, my urine tested, my stool tested, doing parasite cleanses, doing coffee enemas, um, all kinds of stuff. You know, being in my sauna um, ever since I, you know, uncovered, especially postpartum that, you know, I was having trouble losing weight. I got into peptides. I got into detox protocols. I eat organic, grass-fed, high-nutrient-dense foods, I hired a private chef recently so that I could avoid because I love I hate cooking. I love eating out. But the oils that people cook with, the microwaves that restaurants will use, um, the pans, we don't know what pans they're cooking with. There's so many aspects to eating out that just are unknown to us when we go and eat. Like we have no idea where the ingredients are coming from. So that's been a massive game changer is um, Brendan and I hiring a chef who comes once a week and just meal preps for us. And we have just really good quality food. I've noticed even in the last few weeks since she's been here, what a massive difference it has made to my energy levels, to, you know, my weight loss journey, to my ability to think clearly, to the way that I feel, the quality of emotions that I experience in my day-to-day life, just the just so many aspects that we don't think that is tied to the food that we're putting into our bodies. Um, I'm really particular, you know, about making sure the air in my house is clean. I have air filters throughout my house. I um, get my house checked for mold now, which is really crucial and important that most people don't do. Um, The quality of my water is extremely important. I now have a device that adds hydrogen to water. So I drink hydrogen water, which is phenomenal. You can look into the the research around that. I take lots of supplements. I get plenty of sun. I uh, ground my feet in grass. I know I look like an absolute hippie and probably sound like an absolute hippie, but oh my God, it's so important for you to get morning light, to get raw sun, like raw dogging the sun for 10 minutes a day. You can put sunscreen on after 10 minutes. Of course, it's not about frying in the sun. It's not about getting burned. It's just getting that high quality UV light that helps us convert um, into vitamin D in our body. It's really crucial. Uh, Look at the connection between low vitamin D levels and a lot of mental health issues. There's a huge correlation there, Um, huge connection. I get eight hours of sleep minimum. In fact, most sleep studies, fun fact, have been done, you know, with men, not women. And so it's been found that men need seven to eight hours of sleep, but women might actually need between eight to 10 hours of sleep per night. And we are absolutely not getting enough sleep. Um, It's ridiculous how little sleep we're getting. And I get so pissed off when I'm not getting eight hours of sleep because I'm like, ah, it's the most important thing in the world to me. Um, I move my body. I get plenty of exercise. I cannot live without exercise. I love exercise so much. And I know I sound crazy because I know so many people in the world who hate exercising, but even just walking. You don't have to be a lifter or a Pilates girl like me. You don't have to step foot in the gym if you just walk. And if you live in an environment where you can't get outside because it's too hot, like me, um, or it's too cold, it's snowing outside, they sell walking pads on Amazon that you can get for, I don't know, 40, 50 bucks even, probably even cheaper. And of course, the brands all range in prices. Just put that thing in front of your TV, okay? You can literally watch TV. You can catch up on your favorite show. 30 minutes to an hour is such a great amount of time. 
and you just walk on the walking pad. You're like walking in place. It's like a treadmill, but it takes up way less space. And again, doesn't cost as much as a treadmill, doesn't take up as much space as a treadmill. And you're just walking and you're getting exercise and you feel great. You feel so good and you're catching up on your show. So it's that habit stacking that everyone loves to talk about. Um, Detoxing regularly. Oh my goodness. It doesn't matter if you have had mold exposure, glyphosate toxicity, or any sort of other environmental toxin that you are particularly struggling with. All of us are now exposed to environmental toxins. I think it's like the big, big, big thing that I wish more people were talking about. You know, the circles that I'm in, of course, everyone is talking about it, but I just know most of the world has no idea that we are literally breathing in nanoplastics through our air. Okay. We don't even have to touch plastic anymore to be affected by plastic. Heavy metals everywhere. Terrible, terrible, terrible things. And so it's important for us to constantly detox from environmental toxins. Um, Just integrating it into your own routine. So whether it is going to a sauna or getting a sauna for your own home, there's various different saunas. The one that I have is incredibly bougie, but I know that there's much cheaper ones that you can get. You can get sauna blankets. Um, You don't even have to have space for a sauna. You can literally get one of those sauna blankets and just lay it on your bed or lay it on a, you know, a surface of some sort. Just lie in it for half an hour a day or even just a couple times a week or even just once a week is a massive game changer because then you're opening up your detox pathways. You know, taking clay baths, like there's a particular magnetic clay that I use, which if you guys are interested in knowing the exact products that I use, of course, let me know. I'll I'll be happy to link them in the show notes. Um, Magnesium chloride, look into not using Epsom salts. I don't use Epsom salts because I've heard that they emit gases that aren't necessarily good for you. And they're actually man-made. They're not like a natural mineral that comes in nature. So magnesium chloride is actually, it comes from nature and it gives you the same magnesium that an Epsom salt does and it will draw toxins out of your body the same way that Epsom salt does, but it doesn't have the toxic nature or at least the toxic, potentially toxic nature. I haven't done much research into this. I just heard someone say one thing and I was like, oh shit, that makes sense to me. So I'm going to switch to magnesium chloride. And then zeolite powder is another thing. I think it comes from volcanic ash. It's this compound or this thing, this powder that I take. I put it in water. I drink it um, one scoop per day. And what it does is it's like negatively charged and it uh, magnetically attracts negative ions or however it works. Okay. You guys can do your own research. (laughs) Don't expect me to explain this eloquently for every single topic that I talk about. It draws in the negative ions that are coming from heavy metals and parasites and all kinds of junk that can be in your body. Um, And it doesn't attach to vitamins and minerals. It's very safe. Like kids can take it. So anyway, something else that I do. I really respect my vessel. I really take care of my vessel now. And I clearly the last two years postpartum have been has been such a journey because I'm like, what the fuck is happening to my body? Like, I don't like this. I don't feel good. I don't feel good in my body. Something needs to change. Um, you know, yes, of course, it's a weight loss journey. But more importantly than that, I, I'm telling you right now, it's less about how I look and it's so much more about how I feel. And how I feel is my frequency. So when I feel good, my frequency is high. When I don't feel good, my frequency is low. I'm more likely to do good in the world when I feel good and I'm more likely to not do good in the world when I feel bad. Make sense? I feel like it's basic math here. Number four is I don't let people overstep my boundaries and I don't give my power away to other people. So this is one of those where I'm like, okay, it's still a work in progress for me. I'm definitely a recovering people pleaser. I have gone through so many uncomfortable moments in the last five years of just chipping away at my desire to make sure that other people are more comfortable than I am. And it took me years and years and years to be like, what the fuck? Where's the logic in that? Where is the logic in that? Why do I need to be uncomfortable just because other people are insecure and comfortable or just because other people don't like something about me? Why do I have to change myself to cater myself to other people to literally leak my energy energy away to bleed myself to other people's comfort levels? 
where is the logic in that? It just makes no sense. So anyway, I've come so far with this and everyone who knows me in my actual real life will probably say the same, that I've really, really, really been constantly implementing living in alignment with my values. And if something takes me away from my family, takes me away from freedom, you know, freedom is a value of mine, family is a value of mine, mental, physical, emotional health, I feel like just health, like that's true wealth to me. That's really important. So if it makes me unhealthy, if it takes time away from my family, if it takes time away from or or if it takes anything away from me living my life's purpose and my life's mission, then it's an absolute no. You know, being fulfilled by what I want to do every single day and only creating that which I want to create. And another value of mine is fun. So if it's not fun, I don't want to do it. Right. So I have practiced and implemented and it's so rewarding. It's so uncomfortable, especially when other people don't like it. When you set a boundary and other people don't like it or other people feel uncomfortable by it or other people are, you know, giving you a response to it that isn't something positive per se, then yeah, it it sucks. But on the other hand, maintaining your personal power is everything. And this is something my shaman constantly grills me on. And there was a meditation that I did um, a couple months ago where I was just seeing just these black birds, probably crows. I don't know. I, I didn't see the exact bird that they were, but I can't imagine that there's many black birds aside from crows or I don't know. Anyway, let's let's call them crows. All these crows just are leaving my body. Like I see like thousands, millions, billions, numbers I've never seen before, just leaving my body, leaving my body, leaving my body, leaving my body. And I asked him about this vision. Like, is there a meaning for this? Like, can you help me decipher this vision? Like, it's very interesting. And he said, oh yeah, that's just the energy of all the people that you've been giving your power away, like finally leaving you. And I went, whoa, that's powerful. And he's been hinting at me, you know, constantly giving my power away. And I'm finally seeing it. I'm finally, it's like more life keeps giving me more and more and more and more and more examples of like, hey, you're giving your power away here. Hey, you're giving your power away here. You did this out of obligation. You did this because you didn't want to upset this person. You did this. And the truth is, you guys, If you have someone who is upset by the boundaries that you set in your life, it's only the people who those boundaries affect them in the way that those are the people that wanted to overstep your boundaries. The only people who would get upset about the boundaries that you set are people who don't actually care about you. They only care about themselves and they would have overstepped your boundaries anyway. So they're not actually real friends. They're not actually people who care about your well-being, who care about your mental, physical, and emotional health, who care about you thriving. Those are the only people who would ever get affected by your boundaries and get upset at you having boundaries. So just something to think about. Anytime I make someone uncomfortable by the boundaries that I set, of course, like disagreements happen, but like someone who just is completely derailed by it and just has a reaction that is very strong towards it, I know immediately that this person is not in alignment with my life. This person is not someone who I want to keep around in my life anymore. So now I'm very serious about this. And maintaining your personal power is maintaining your frequency at the highest level. It's you understanding your worth at the highest level and what you are deserving of and what you are capable of and what you are, like who you truly are at the core of your being. So huge, huge, huge. Um, And number five, the last one, I will limit my time on the internet and I will go days at a time of deleting certain social media apps, especially when I feel like they're taking too much of my attention. And let me tell you, this one's a work in progress. And the reason why is because I live a, I have a career that literally relies on social media. So social media is a big, big, big driving force behind my business. Absolutely, I need to have a positive relationship with social media. 
I need to use it for me. I cannot let it use me. Okay. I look at it this way. When we spend so much time scrolling, 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 getting deep into other people's lives, seeing what everyone else is up to, and just spending our whole day in other people's lives, you know, where our attention goes, our energy flows. So we are flowing all of our energy into other people's lives instead of our own, instead of our own dreams and goals and ambitions, instead of our own peace of mind, instead of our own nervous systems, instead of our own bodies, instead of our own lives, we are bleeding our energy, our power, our frequency away, our attention away into other people's lives. And then we wonder and we ask ourselves, why do I feel like I'm constantly comparing myself to other people? Hmm, I wonder why. It's because you're spending too much time in everyone else's lives. And it's not their actual lives. It's the highlight reel of their lives. It's the things that they have curated. It's the things that they want to show online. And we're all guilty of this. And I wouldn't even use as strong of a word as guilty. It's just strategic, you know? We are more likely to share the positive things that are happening in our lives than the negative things. And it just depends on who you are. Obviously, I share the negative things as well because I am in the personal development industry and I share the lessons that I learn in my own life to help other people. So it works for me. But for the most part, people are not going to go online and share all the negative things that are happening in their lives. They want to, you know, showcase how amazing they're doing and how all these wonderful things are happening to them. So then we go on social media with this flawed perception that everyone is doing better than us and everyone has it all figured out and we're all alone with our problems and our issues. And oh my God, I'm not good enough. And we wonder and wonder and wonder where that stems from. So something I used to do, I don't do it anymore because I feel like I have more awareness and self-control when it comes to social media. But back when I was starting, especially when I started my business, I used to employ these apps and I don't remember what the, actually, I remember one of them being called Kill Newsfeed on Facebook. I'm sure these apps exist nowadays. I don't know what they would be called. I don't know if they're called the same. I don't know how they work nowadays, but I used to block the newsfeed on Facebook. This is before I was running my business on Instagram. This is when I was primarily on Facebook. So I can't speak for Instagram. I can't speak for all the other social apps, but I'm just letting you know that there's tools out there that can help you. And this is like to the extreme level that I took this. I literally blocked my newsfeed. So when you would go on my Facebook newsfeed, what you would see is just an inspirational quote instead of my newsfeed. And then there would be a bar where I can send people messages. I can look at my friends list. Yes, I can do all that. But then I'm like, okay, I'm a, con- I'm a creator on here. I'm not a consumer. So my only option is to post something. I can't like, yes, you can go to other people's profiles and check it out and whatever, but I'm not just aimlessly scrolling here. I'm messaging people about my business opportunity. I am answering, you know, questions that I'm getting about my business opportunity, which was obviously Beachbody at the time. I am looking for new leads. I'm only going into groups that are belong to my team, that belong to trainings, that belong to things that are actually going to further advance my business. And it's no wonder why I was able to stay so focused. Like, hey, more, uh, you know, the episode that I did on ADHD when I said I had, I figured out my way of being in the world. Like I figured out my ways of focusing my energy and I feel like having ADHD is the best gift of my life because it literally taught me how to focus on what I want and how to not focus on what I don't want. It literally gave me that challenge of having focus issues so that I can really practice the muscle and really channel the things that I want to hyperfixate on and really choose what I want to hyperfocus on rather than being at the um, at the whim of ADHD. Okay. So anyway, all of this to say, consumption mode is the biggest distractor away from our dreams and goals. And of course, of course, like everyone loves to scroll every now and then. I'll I'll scroll on TikTok, I'll scroll on Instagram, I'll scroll, you know, on some whatever, YouTube and just see if there's a video that I would like to watch. I'm not saying that I'm like this perfect person who never scrolls a day in her life on social media platforms. What I'm trying to say is that I'm just very aware and I really limit my time and if it gets in the way of my happiness, my joy, my peace of mind, my nervous system regulation, if it gets in the way of my business, my 
dreams and aspirations, my ability to take action in my life and pursue the things that I want, rather don't want, then I will just delete the app for just a couple days. Just take that dopamine cleanse and just do some boring shit for three days so that I'm not constantly getting addicted to all the stuff that goes on in our brains when we're flooded with notifications and new updates and posts and dramas and traumas and uh, 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 all this stuff going on. So anyway, that's my episode for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what are some things that you don't do to maintain your frequency. Give me some ideas. I'd love to hear them. Uh, Maybe I'll do an episode on five things that I actually do, 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 do to raise my frequency, maintain my frequency. Again, it's so crucial in manifestation. It has everything to do with manifestation, even though directly I'm not teaching you like a meditation hack or a, you know, do this hypnosis or like visualize this thing to raise your frequency. It's very practical stuff that we, you know, that we interact with in our day-to-day life. Now, if you love this episode, if you love the podcast, I would so appreciate uh, a review. If you left me a review on Spotify or Apple or anywhere where you listen to this podcast that has the ability to leave a review. If you're watching on YouTube, of course, uh, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, like the video. That would help the channel so much. And with that being said, I will catch you inside of my free workshop, All In on Your Dream Life, that you can sign up for by heading over to www.manifestationbabe.com slash go all in. Or I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye.